So the M4 Mac Mini has just officially came out, and what's really cool is that this is a really big upgrade coming from the previous generation. Now, if you're brand new to the whole entire Mac Mini series, I'll go and show you exactly how to use this brand new type of Mac. It's beautiful, it has a lot of really cool stuff going on with it, and if you're new to the series, well this is a really good way of getting you know an entry into the whole entire Mac lineup. Now this is a pretty big redesign, structurally it looks the same, it's just much smaller in general, it's a much smaller size, it's actually much easier to go and kind of you know take it around with you. And this is the cheapest model that they serve, this is the $600 option. So a little bit of the outside, on the front side of this particular Mac, you have two USB Type-C ports on the front. So these, these are standard USB Type-C ports, these are not Thunderbolt ports, but they're still very nice that they give you this type of capability. You're getting your headphone jack at the very front, as well as an LED indicator that tells you whether it's on or off. On the right and left sides, there's not really much else going on. You have the Apple logo at the very top. And on the back side, you're getting your standard AC adapter. So this is what you use to go and actually power it up. You're getting an Ethernet port, an HDMI port, and then three Thunderbolt 4 ports. So you're getting a lot of different ports around this particular thing. The fact that you're getting three on the back and two on the front is really, really cool. But we're not done yet. On the bottom, you are actually getting your power button. So this is a new design. I'm not really too sure why Apple did this, but we now basically have this new design on the you know, back side. So you now have this power button here, which is cool. I'm glad we have it, but to kind of shimmy it around a little bit. Now to go and set your M4 Mac Mini up, it's very, very basic. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is on the back side, you want to take a look at the ports. You have your AC adapter right here. So the very first thing to grab is basically your AC adapter. So grab your AC adapter that you have. This is basically this you know, particular cord that you have inside of the box. This is what you're going to use to power up your Mac. So grab that AC adapter and go ahead and plug it in on the back side just like so. And then you can go and plug in the other side into some sort of port or some sort of outlet. Now you have a few different options of how you want to go and display this on a display. You can either display it on display via using Thunderbolt or via HDMI. So if you have a Thunderbolt port or an HDMI port, so you can kind of choose whichever one you want. Now the last thing you're going to want to do is go and connect either a magic mouse or like a wireless mouse or a wireless keyboard to your particular Mac. So what you can do is you can, once you power on your Mac for the first time, so make sure it's powered up, you can click on this power button then to power it up. You want to go ahead and connect your lightning cable or whatever cable you have and connect it to your you know, mouse and to your keyboard. So go ahead, grab your mouse, go ahead and plug it in. Make sure it turns on to make sure it's discovered to your you know, Mac. And then once you let go, this should be connected, make sure it's on. And then you can go ahead and grab your keyboard at the same time and you can go ahead and plug your keyboard in like this. And then that's it. So. Your Mac Mini, for the most part, as of this point, should go ahead and already be set up. You should have your keyboard, you should have your mouse, you should have it powered on, and you should have it displayed on a you know screen of some sort. So now I'm going to go and transition into my actual display, and I'll go and show you kind of the main ways of kind of using your Mac. Again, if you want to go and kind of use this thing and plug in accessories, you can also use the front port. But once you power this thing on and display it to a you know, screen, there's a few things you may want to configure. So I'll go and show you my display, and we can kind of go from there. So now we can make our way over to our display. Now when you first set it up and power it on for the first time, you'll basically come into this particular display. So what you can do is you can just go and click on the display, and you can go and set up the language that you basically want. So in this case, you can choose whatever language that you want here, and then you can go and click on this bottom you know, arrow. Now when you go and start kind of going through this process, you'll start to see that it's going to start kind of setting things up randomly for you. You can go and choose the country that you want. In this case, so I'll just go and click on continue, but you can kind of configure the country. Now, if you want to kind of utilize or utilize any of these particular accessibility options, you can go and specify that here. So if you want vision, motor, hearing, cognitive, you can go and kind of choose those whichever way you want. Then the next box will basically show you all the Wi-Fi's that are available, and you can just choose whatever Wi-Fi connection you want. And then this next box will show you software updates. So if there's a software update available, it'll show you here. In this case, I'll just go ahead and skip it but you can choose whether you want to update your software or not. In this, in this case, I'll just click update later. Now data and privacy. This is where you can go and kind of specify your data and privacy options. So if you want to migrate your data from a different machine to your new one, you can go and do that here. So you can choose whether you want to go ahead and actually you know, within your migration assistant, you can see how you want to transfer your information. 
So you can go and transfer from a Mac that's already existing or you know, from a Time Machine backup or startup disk. From a Windows PC, you can choose whichever one you want. In this case, I'll just go and skip it because I'm not going to do either one, so I'm going to click Not Now. But you can go and migrate your data from a different Mac or a different Windows PC to your new one. Now, this is where you want to sign in with your Apple account. In my particular situation, I'm just going to skip it just for the basis of this video. But you want to go ahead and I would recommend you to sign in with your Apple account. If you don't have an Apple account, I'd recommend creating one. This is how you can go and start utilizing basically things like the App Store, iMessage, all those cool things, even Apple Intelligence, you'll need an Apple account. So make sure you go and create a new Apple account in order to actually utilize it. But like I said, in this case, I'll just set up later and I'll skip it and just move on with this. Now this is where you just basically agree to their terms of service. So if you want to, you can go ahead and you know read through it. In this case, I'll just go and click on agree. Now this is where you can start creating your computer's account. So you can go through and you know kind of say whatever you want the full name to be. So if I just wanted to be like a user account, user. If you want a password, you can set it up. I don't think there's a way to do it without it. Yeah, you have to type in a password. So type in the password that you want and then click on continue. And then you can enable your location services. So if you want to, you can enable them. In this case, I'll just keep it on, but I'd recommend you to go and enable them for the most part. Now, next up, you can select your time zone. In this case, I'm kind of more on the Eastern side. So I'll go and choose something like, you know, New York, New York. So I'll click on, click on continue. I usually do not share my analytics with Apple. So I just tell, toggle this off, but you can toggle it on, but it's just more background stuff. I typically keep it off. Your screen time, this basically allows you to go and get a weekly report of insights and stuff of how much you're using your screen and how much you're using your Mac. If you want to, you can keep it on. In this case, I'll just go and click on continue and I'll keep it off. Now, this is where I'd recommend keeping it on. If this is your main computer and you want to utilize all the things between you know, your device, then enabling and keeping on Siri might be a really good option for you. So click on continue. You can kind of just let it the choose for you and it kind of scares you. The and then uh, what we can do after is we can go and click on it not now here I go and click on continue and then you can choose your look so you can have it auto you can have it light I typically keep mine light and then you can go and click on continue and you're ready to go you've now set up your Mac for the very first time if this is your first M4 Mac and then you come into the home screen so I've already had like I already have like 20 videos on how to break down this home screen for the most part it's pretty basic you have your status bar up here control toggles and more data up here you have your dock at the bottom that you can go and kind of monitor and check all your data out and everything like that. Uh, app store settings, the big apps you're going to use. If you hop into settings, you can always get access to all your information here. And if you're ever wanting to update your Mac, you can always click on general, click on software update, and you can go through and update your Mac in this way. So there's a lot of cool stuff here. The M4 Mac mini is a really, really good Mac. And I'm glad you picked it up because it has so much power, has so much capability. And even with this base model that I got, 16 gigabytes of RAM, the standard one, I'm actually very surprised so far about how powerful this thing is, at least from the reports that I've seen online. This is the first time I've set it up. So I can tell you right now, there's a lot of capability behind this thing. I really like the design of the M4 Mac. So if this is your first Mac, you know, welcome to the whole entire you know, Mac lineup. If this is your 10th Mac, then you know, welcome back home. So that's kind of all you have to do to really start setting up your Mac. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.